Welcome to the Main Street Moments Podcast. I'm Brian. And this is Kathy. Well, we have breaking news that has just broke today at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom right here in Florida. And uh, this is um, something that we told you was going to happen a little while ago. We got a lot of feedback from people telling us this would never happen. And Kathy and I were right. It has happened. Listen to this. Phone photography and filming no longer allowed on Space Mountain at the Magic Kingdom. So no filming on a phone and no filming with a camera on Space Mountain. Now, we were talking a few shows back that at Disneyland Tokyo, they had banned vlogging. And I, and what I told you guys, and Kathy, you agreed with me on this, what we talked about then, was that Disney often tests things in their foreign markets. Mm-hmm. And then when they work out the kinks, they bring them to America. And this happened with with many things, the Disney Genie. I think the reservations. Like this, the reservation system and such. And now they they have done this with filming both on phones and on cameras. So there is no recording of any kind now allowed on Space Mountain at the Magic Kingdom. And what I believe this is, they've I think Disney has already decided no more vlogging, no more live streaming. And they are slowly, you know, like the boiling the uh, frog in the cold water, if you yeah. know that analogy. They're slowly going to bring this in one ride at a time, starting at my favorite ride in all of the Magic Kingdom, Space Mountain. Well, it's interesting they started on that ride because it's like probably the darkest ride. So I don't know too many people that film on oh, that. Oh, a lot of people do, especially when you um, – The beginning. The beginning when you first go uphill yeah. on the track and you've got the space station. I just station wonder why they chose that ride of all the rides. But I think what's <clears> going to happen is – and I feel a little, I'm not I, I, happy about it, but I feel a little vindicated because we got a lot of heat for our show and a lot of people said we're clickbaiting and we're scaring people never do that. and we're, we never and do we're that. just saying things for clicks and views mm-hmm. and all this stuff. No, we said that, like what you said, that because it's happening in Tokyo, we said on the show, it's possible that this is a precursor to what's going to happen at Walt Disney World. And let me tell you, there were a lot of people as well a lot that left comments that were happy about it. They don't like the live streamers. They don't like the vloggers because they put lights on. They have the light on their phone, especially that's distracting. But we had said in that show that the first thing they're going to do is ban the photography on the rides. And I said that myself, I said that that'll be the first step. They're going to ban all photography across the board on the rides. And I think this is only the first one. It's going to be like a slow. Well, yeah. And, Soon it'll be on all of them. And right up the road at Universal Orlando, they've been doing it that way for years, and they do True. enforce it. They will stop a ride if and do you're you see vlogging. a lot of vloggers or live streamers at Universal? That's why there aren't too many Universal right. vloggers. There's a, there's a handful of people, but not too many because you can't film on the rides, and they have a lot of copyright music. This is yeah. really going to affect – if they ban them on all the rides, let's say they ban on all the rides eventually, which is what I personally think is going to happen. Because why ban it on Space Mountain? Why just leave it there? Why that one ride and well, not all the rides? Some people on social media think that because it's a roller coaster, people can drop things. There's well, lots of rides you can drop things on, not yeah, just Space well, Mountain. Let's see. There, exactly. You have Everest. You have um, – uh, there's other rides, like you said, that are Thunder Mountain. But so I think this is just the beginning. Of course, we could be wrong, but it's just no, a little wrong. curious to me – why they're allowing it now in the park on that ride. And do you really think it's going to be only that ride? No. Um, And I think this will affect live streamers more than anybody because um, if they ban them on all rides, okay? Because if you're a live streamer and say you can't film on any of the rides, Mm -hmm. say that happens over the next six months, you can't stop your live stream every to go on every single ride and be like, okay, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. That's not going to work. Vloggers can edit and decide what they're going to film. Well, here's the thing, so Kathy. It'll affect both, but I think live streamers it, a little more. Here, here's, here's the thing. This is – we're not talking about that they may stop vlogging and filming of any kind on Space Mountain. This has happened. In fact, right now, 
the signage is up in front of the entrance to Space Mountain. So this isn't like <clears throat> something that people are talking about on social media. Mm-hmm. There is a sign up at the entrance yep. of Space Mountain right now saying no filming of any kind, no cameras, no phones. Do you think the vloggers this- are – a little, I know, I know we vlog, but we don't consider ourselves like full-time vloggers or anything yeah. like that. Do you think that they're now a little nervous? Before when it was Tokyo, they're like, oh, no big deal. Do you think now that it's happening in Walt Disney World, they're getting a little panicked? No, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why the vloggers, the vloggers, because we, we get a lot of feedback on our shows. They're in denial. They're in denial. They, they need us. I don't know, maybe. <clears throat> this, is, this is what the, they need <laughs> us for the publicity. Let me tell you. Disney is banning vloggers for a number of reasons. Well, and, they haven't done that yet. And when I say vlogger, no, they banned them from Space Mountain. Okay, they well. banned them from Tokyo, so it's happening. This is being done for a number of reasons, okay? And there may be more than the ones I name. One, there's too many vloggers and live streamers at the parks. This is something I've talked about a lot. There's a lot. You know, I go to the park, and I do vlog. I vlog at the parks. But there are too many vloggers. I'm bumping into vloggers and live, streamer, and live streamers. There are so many. And every, and I, I watch a lot of Disney YouTubers, both live streamers and vloggers. And I think I know everybody. And I see a whole bunch of people I've never seen before. Every time I go, there's more people picking it up every day. Oh, absolutely. You know, so there's too many vloggers and live streamers at the parks. And it's, it's re- even as a vlogger myself, mm-hmm. it's... It's a little bit embarrassing, really. There's so many. I've taught, and another reason I've told you about this, Kathy, I have seen on a number of occasions guests very annoyed, in particular at the live streamers. Live streamers yeah, annoy they don't guests. Like the live streamers. Now the re- sure. the reason that people get more annoyed with live streamers than vloggers is because uh, live streamers are talking to the live chat all the time, and that's annoying. You know, when they're when you're in an, in a queue well, or, plus, or something. When you're on a ride. Mm-hmm. Your phone is still on, and it's you're holding it up. Mm-hmm. So the people behind you, yeah, you know, don't like that bright light. Now, I think I think some people can turn it down, maybe turn down. I'm not exactly sure how it works with live streaming. Maybe you can turn the light down, but it still kind of ruins the moment for people. And I think there's also, and I've talked about this before. I think there's also people that don't like mm-hmm. being broadcasted live without their permission or knowledge on certain platforms Mm -hmm. and maybe Mm -hmm. youtube and maybe people have complained i don't know but i personally feel because this happened to tokyo and now they're bringing it here to walt disney world on one ride one of the most popular rides i personally feel this will be go on all the rides across the board it will. over the next six and I'm months. Gonna, yeah. And then – Well, yeah, and I'm going to tell we'll you why see. in a minute, why how, why I know it's going to be on all rides. But there, let me go through the reasons. I mean, why not just bring it to one? They would do it on all of them. Let me go through some of the reasons, no though, sense. why they're banning vlogging. And they yeah. just started it on Space Mountain. They banned it in Tokyo, They they but they've stopped it now on Space Mountain right here in Orlando, right? Okay, so the one reason is there's too many vloggers. And you guys know what I mean. I mean, it's ridiculous, Okay. Especially when vloggers are collaborating like in a pack and you've got a like lot, a pack a of, all, of vloggers, it's a bit much. Second reason is this, and this, this is one we've talked about too. I think Disney, I think, is aware of, of, of special events like, the, like the, the Christmas or Halloween parties that a lot of people, I think, do not go because they feel they get the experience watching the live streams. Yeah, you know, I think and, that's part of it. And and the vlogging. You, you, I feel like I've been there. I I have not been to the Mickey's Halloween because I feel like it would be boring to me because I've seen it so many times on Resort TV One or, you know, that crazy Disney lady. some people it has the opposite <clears throat> effect. It makes them want to go and experience it. But I can see where it can affect people. Disney's hard up for money. So if they think something is stopping people from coming to the park, they're going to they're gonna do it. One thing, too, about another – that's true. A third reason, and there's more, but another reason is they know – Disney knows how many times you use your annual pass. And, you know oh, – They the, know everything the, about you, that's for sure. The thing with annual passes – annual passes have changed since the era of vlogging and live streaming. Annual passes used to be like gym memberships. You'd go to a gym. You'd get a membership. And you wouldn't go back, right? Or you, you'd go for the first month and you'd stop, but you, you still got to pay them and they get the benefit without the person taking up the space at the gym. That's how annual passes used to be at Walt Disney World. I, I know Anaheim's a little different because that park's a little more localized. 
than Orlando. Orlando here in Florida was not so localized. Annual passes were something people didn't use that much. Now people are using annual passes three, five, six days a week. Yeah, the and- locals, I, I would definitely say um, that people that live in Orlando, because I remember mm-hmm. – in high school and college, I knew people that lived in the Orlando area, especially in college. I met people that lived there and I would ask them, do you ever go to Disney? They're like, no, we don't, you know, locals don't go there. They would go to like pleasure Island and go bar hopping. But I remember I had a lot of friends in college who were from the Orlando area and they never went to Disney because it's like always there. You know what I mean? But I think you're right. I think now it's different and vlogging probably has a lot to do with that. Maybe they feel that the vlogging is causing too many locals to go. Um, I just had a friend that moved up there, one of my friends from college. She goes all the time. She's like there three days a week now. She loves Disney. I think that's part of the reason they moved there, a big part of it. And maybe, I'm not saying in her case, but maybe they feel all the vlogging and live streaming is making too many locals go to the parks. Well, annu- you know what I'm saying? They the, watch it and they're like, you know, let's go, let's go. Annual passes, the way, the way annual passes used to be used was people would get an annual pass and they, might only, twice they might only use it once or twice a year for like a week-long vacation or something. This thing of going to Disney so, like every day like some people do. That just wasn't a thing, and that's much more common now. The locals, there used to be – I don't think they offer this. I think more locals go than before, yeah. for sure. Um, I don't think they offer this pass anymore. There were a couple of passes that were very popular with locals that I don't think they offer anymore. They had one pass for um, the parks that was just a weekday pass, no weekends. Yeah, it was I, like I, Monday through Thursday. Yeah, and then they had another pass that was for Epcot after four. Yeah, and that was I, pretty cool. I don't think they offer those any longer. They may or they may not. I but, don't think they do. We had more options for Florida but, residents. But in um, – and Kathy and I don't live in the Orlando area. We are in Florida, but we're in South Florida. Mm-hmm. So we're two and a half, three hours from the parks depending on traffic. But Disney really doesn't want people using their annual passes several times a week. They want you, they want you using your annual pass once or twice a year if that. Well, the pass holders mm-hmm. typically um, – and and also maybe when they have these vloggers and 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 because so many now I'm just guessing this, but you're right. There are so many vloggers now, and maybe Disney sees those people as taking advantage of the annual passes. Yes, and they don't really spend a lot of money there. Mm-hmm. They browse the shops, but at the same time, you could flip the coin and say they encourage people to to want to buy stuff. I don't know. I'm not in on Disney in the corporate level. Um, there could be very uh, various reasons. It could be a liability issue. Maybe they're worried about people getting hurt on the rides and somebody dropping their phone or flying in somebody's face. It could be a whole group of reasons why they're starting to do this. But the fact of the matter is they are. And, and I, I want to talk about how it affects the vloggers and the live streamers. Like I said, if you're a live streamer, uh, I think it'll affect you a little bit more because if all the rides are not allowed, like at Universal, nobody live streams Universal not very, very, very rarely. Rick Flix does, and he he just basically stands in a spot almost. Yeah, because you talks. can't go from ride to mm-hmm. ride to ride. Mm-hmm. Now, we watch like Resort TV One, that crazy Disney lady. When they stream, it's an endless stream, okay? The only time they might mm-hmm. stop is if they go to the restroom and they have somebody hold the camera and some for rides, them. they can't get signals. But they, right, that, but they keep streaming, though. Like, if you go on Thunder Mountain, when you get to the top of the one hill, they, mm-hmm. you always lose signal. And Josh will tell you, okay, we're going to lose signal, so go back a minute and, and you'll catch up. They don't stop streaming. They continue to stream. I mean, they never say, okay, I'm going to end the stream and come back. The only time they do that is if there's, like, a major technical glitch. So if you're a live streamer and the rides don't allow cameras, what are you going to do? Just walk around the park and not go on any and, rides at all? And, It'd be difficult for sure. And, you know, a lot of people on social media, because this is being talked about a lot on social media right now, they're, they're talking about dropping things on the ride. Well, if that were the case, the first ride yeah, they would have they would have uh, banded on would have been Guardians of the Galaxy Galactic Rewind, which is – I almost lost my iPhone on a few weeks ago. So They're so, definitely discouraging yeah. the film. Well, here's another reason. Sure. Another reason is Tron. Tron's going to be opening soon. It's, you know, it's in its final stages. It's taken longer to build Tron than build both Magic Kingdoms here in America. It's insane. And that's a ride you cannot take a camera on, you know, because it's like a motorcycle thing, you know. They, you know they, 
They, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't even know how you could film on that. It's going to be very difficult for it. It's, I believe it's easier for Disney to enforce no filming on any ride than yes. it is on select rides. So I think it's going to be That's what I'm saying. It's going to become wide. across the board. It's going to have to be because why would they just do it on this one ride? That makes no sense. There's other rides that are similar. Get people used to the idea. That's why. Yeah, it's like a slow drip. So I personally believe that a full ban is coming uh, very soon. Yeah. And it'll be interesting and, to see how the vloggers and live streamers and I'll tell do you, regularly how they handle this. I'll tell you another thing. If you've noticed with the vloggers, mm -hmm. you don't see too many press events with vloggers lately, do you? It's almost, I'm not saying there are none, but I haven't seen any really in a long time. Not like I used to be, uh, oh, see. Oh, yeah, I used to so, see them all the time. So I think Disney has already cut off a lot of the vloggers. And another thing, too, there's a lot of reasons why they're doing this. Um, another reason is the Galactic Star Cruiser became a, a Galactic, the Galactic Star Cruiser is a disaster. All right. Oh, it I is, know where you're going with this. And there was, and most of the vlogging, even people that got free stays on the on the ripoff, it was negative. And Disney doesn't like this negative commentary. You know, like Prince Charming Dev, since he got taken off the media list is basically on this bring down Disney thing. If you notice, like I, I, Prince Charming Dev, it's always negative. He's like on this this rant about Disney. He's not alone. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just as an example. There's a negative tone with vloggers now. It's not all about a happy place. It's I think you hit the nail on the mm -hmm. head with that. I think with the Galactic Star Cruiser, them they, they've had a lot of negative publicity around that. I just read an article a couple weeks ago where somebody went there, an influencer that said it was like a glorified prison. Yeah, I saw that. Um, they've had so much negative publicity. Maybe they're going to start cutting off the outside media altogether and bring in their own in-house media. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're going to bring in their own in-house vloggers where they can control what's edit the editing. Um, maybe they're planning on bringing something to Disney+. Plus. Um, who knows? Some kind, their own in-house vlogging, whatever. But I think you're right. I think when they invite all these influencers to events and things, and they get the bad, they can't really control what they do. They invite them, they pay for it, and this and that. And I think they're, you know, like you said, they really need to make money because they're now talking about merging with Apple or Apple buying parts of Disney or Disney. Mm -hmm. So clearly, they're having some financial issues. The pandemic definitely didn't help Disney. Um, and I think, uh, that's definitely something to think well, about. Well, yeah. And okay. And we're, we're entering this new wave at Disney. Okay. I, I mentioned Tron. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to get Tron opening and I promise you there'll be no filming on Tron. I don't and, know how and, you could. And then the next big, there's a big phase coming to Disney and that is Eb Ebcot. Okay. There's a lot of construction's really moving along finally at Ebcot and when something new opens up, okay, you have literally, it seems to me like 100, 200 vloggers and live streamers show up. They go every day. They fill yeah. up the queues and everything else. But they also put a narrative out there in the public about all these attractions. And Disney, I don't think once, once vloggers and live streamers putting a narrative out there for Tron or the Moana – attraction or whatever attractions they bring over at Epcot. So I think that's a big factor as well. Plus, like you, like maybe they don't like people showing the construction all the time, showing how messed up Epcot is, how it's torn up, or the construction of Tron, how long it's taking. You have channels like Mickey Views, and, and uh, who's, which is very good. Maybe they don't like all these influencers having so much access being on people mover nonstop to get Tron construction. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe they're thinking, you know what, this is kind of ruining the magic at this point. Like there's too much information getting out there and, you know, mm -hmm. people might see the Tron stuff. They might be waiting for Tron to open and they might be putting off their vacation because of Tron. And they might be like, you know what? It's a mess. Epcot's a mess. So I, you know, I'm not going. So I think, they see mm -hmm. the negative side. Like you said, co corporations are looking at the money they're losing as well as what they're making, but they're more focused on what they're losing. Mm -hmm. And they might be thinking, you know what? There's too much access. There's too much information and there's too much negativity getting out there that we just don't want people to mm -hmm. see just yet. We want to be able to control what they see and, and what goes on. And we, this, this thing with space mountain, we got it in two articles. We double checked. 
Uh, so I put them in the Facebook group, Main Street Moments. Please join the group. The, and, and the articles are there. The sign is in front of Space Mountain right there now as we are speaking. So let us know in the comments what you think about all this. Now, I just want to talk mm-hmm. about really one of my favorite vloggers. It, it's hard to say this is my favorite person. But the uh, and w- when I talk about vloggers in this sense, I'm talking about Disney specific vloggers. One of my favorite vloggers that I like very much who has become a controversial person is Michael K. And I I like Michael K. I've met Michael K several times. He is super nice to everybody. He's really cool. Uh we've been watching him for many years. Now, of course, since he uh, became a Florida resident, things got a little weird. He went on like this bender at Disney where he just overdosed on Disney. You know, he, yeah, he's a Disney, like a crack addict. He's a Disney fanatic. He lived in Maryland. He came to Florida and then he went on this, you know, it, 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 yeah, like, like a, yeah, like a drug addict, but on, <laughs> but on Disney and he was on a constant high and like, whoa. And it, and it got a little strange, especially with his brother. Who's a little weird. Well, not a little, his brother's very strange. Okay. Dave K is a, a, a very odd man. But I, li- I like Michael K a lot, and we talk about Michael K a lot on this program because I, I really like Michael K, but I like the old Michael K. A lot of um, people do. Michael K, be- and there's been a change with Michael K, which I'm building up to you guys, that I want your thoughts on. But Michael K, the way he used to do things is he used to do a video every day mm-hmm. of the week at around 8 or 9 a.m. Eastern. I can't remember. It was either 8 or 9 Eastern. And it was an informational video. Like, Very good. Like, for example, I, I wanted I, – I don't know why this stands out in my mind, but they – a number – a couple years back, they changed the rules on the sizes of the baby carriages that you could take, the strollers. So he would do he would do a, a little video, and he would tell you what the new rules are or, you know, th- th- minor little things like that. I don't know how he and came then, up with a different topic every day. Every day I'm like, wow, he, this guy just it was keeps very coming good. up with great ideas. And you learned so much about what was going on at the parks. Yeah. And then on occasion, every few months, he would come to Florida and spend time at the parks, and it was exciting. And then he got here, and he went on this nonstop bender – and uh, gained a lot of weight and everything because he's, he's eating the Disney food and and that stopped, happens to everybody, stopped shaving and and just and then you know and then took very strange photographs with Dave like when they were the uh, a figment of the Dream Finder or or those yoga poses on the cruise you guys know the famous yoga poses on the cruise I love but I but Michael K, and I let me tell you out of the Disney vloggers that are specific Disney vloggers. Michael K, I, I think, is my favorite. I really like him, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm rooting for Michael K to get back where he was. So a few months ago, he's always done cruising on occasion, Disney cruising. But a few months ago, he, he started to transition his channel into a cruising channel. And then he didn't have a video for like a month almost. He had taken an Alaskan cruise yeah. that wasn't even a Disney cruise. By the way, the Disney cruise ripoff, a lot of money. You can have a better cruise for a lot less money on better cruise ships. But um, anyway, he did this Alaskan cruise, and then he didn't do a, a, a vlog for quite some time. And then he did a weird video that he showed a parade. I can't remember which parade. It was was it the Christmas or the Halloween parade? I don't know. And he just was standing there showing the parade. He didn't even talk or show himself. It was very unusual. And then all of a sudden, this week, he's done two live streams: one from Hollywood Studios and one from Epcot uh, Center. And I've I've never known him really to be a live streamer at the parks, but he's been, uh, Michael K has been live streaming from the parks now. I don't mind. I I like his live stream. I and very I've, much enjoy his live stream. I've streams. been saying for years he should become a live streamer. Absolutely. And I I think it would be very. Of course, now we don't know with what's going on with Disney, but I I think he'd be very successful at it. And I always felt, and I've talked to you about this, that he should live stream one day mm. a week. Yeah. And maybe on a Wednesday or a Tuesday when there's no other lives. You have like Lake Buena Visitors, that crazy Disney Resort TV One, Living in Diz. Those are live streamers we watch. And, you know, everybody's got their night or their time. Some people do it multiple times a week. But I think he'd be very good at it because he's very communicative with the audience. He's very talkative. It's just weird because I'm so used to seeing him on camera. Yeah, it's weird. He's never on camera anymore. But people Mm -mm. would complain sometimes that he's on the camera too much because he was in every single shot. And sometimes that would get a little annoying because I'm like, can you, you know, I'd like to mm-hmm. see what you're looking at. And, and I don't think he meant anything by it. I don't think he's an arrogant person. I think he just felt that we were his friends and it, it was like brought us more into. Being, I feel like I'm a friend of Michael. It, it, it brought us more into yeah. being at the park mm-hmm. with him. Like he was talking to us. 
And I think that was the way he went. But now I never hardly ever see him on camera. And then he did a couple of videos where he was at home with some information. There's a lack of consistency. And hey, that's his prerogative. I don't know where he's at with YouTube. Um, I don't know what his his, his views what are he's down doing. significantly. His views are well because there's no consistency. And his channel's not growing. If you want a channel to grow, you have to be consistent. Yeah. Like when he was first starting out, when we first started watching him like four years ago, he was extremely consistent. He, like you said, he had a video every day. And then he would go like on a Disney vacation two or three times a year. And, th- and it was a huge buildup mm-hmm. with the packing and the this mm-hmm. and the planning. And, and that was awesome. But he had a, sh- a video every day. Now, you don't know when his videos are coming or what it's going to be. So I don't know what's, I'm sure he won't comment and tell us, but I don't know what's going on. Well, and, and I don't think a lot of people do know, because I, I don't think let he's, me, you know, let me tell that you, open about it. At, at all. I want Michael K to regain his momentum and be successful because I, I really like Michael K a lot. And, and I know he cares for his viewers on his channel and I he know does. he loves he Disney and, you know, but w- I do, if Michael K happens to listen to this or someone who knows Michael K is listening, it, it, I really enjoyed his two live streams this week. I, I thought they were very good. They were very informative. You know, I like Resort TV One and their live streams, but sometimes I feel like I'm watching a telethon, like Jerry Lewis's telethon, because well, there's, they can't help. That. There's so much money coming up to the. There's so much thanking for the live <laughs> yeah. for the super chats. And well, they have a stuff. generous audience, and and I feel like are they are they raising money for Jerry's kids or 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 or, or what? But on and, and there's nothing wrong with super chats, but sometimes it's just out of control. But um, Michael K, I really enjoyed his live streams, mm-hmm. and he he adds a lot of value on the live streams because when he was doing his live streams, it w- it wasn't a nonstop thank you for the PayPal and the super chats. It was he was going around showing you things and and enjoying them and explaining them and and everything else. So I I, I hope he starts live streaming more because I I want Michael K to. Get back where he was. You know, it would be really good, and this might be crazy. And the best way he can do that is to never vlog with his brother again. Yes. At the parks, you know, it would be really interesting. I don't know if this would be good or bad. Allears.net is clearly dying a slow death. Oh, it is. That's okay. for sure. Molly and them are doing great with their- Mammoth Club has Mammoth destroyed Club, Allears.net. Is a horrible name, but anyway, they're they're doing well. They are. Um, And Molly's great. We all love Molly. But Allears.net is dying without Molly. They need- a name. They need a, a person. They got like 10 people there. They're all over the place. There's no one person you can like really bond with. That's like a super authority. And we were talking about, they should hire somebody. What if they hired Michael K? Be or awesome. what if they hired Spokesman? We thought we put that name out there that he might be good. I think if all ears.net hired, fired everybody else gone and they hired Michael K gave him like a one year contract or whatever, if you're listening and obviously they can edit and control the content and get him on track, get him a script, get him shaved, get him, get him yeah. Get and him dress nice. Yeah, exactly. And he's very good on camera. He is. I think that would be a super idea, a super, what do you guys think? If all ears.net hired Michael K fired everybody else, hired him, make him the face of all ears. I think he'd do it. You know, all and ears, really put them on the, track. The people on all, all ears.net that are on there now, I have no personal dislike of any of them. But what I no, when, we don't we don't know. But them. when Molly left all ears.net and started the one of the most successful YouTube channels for Disney, there is Mammoth Club. It grew faster than anyone. Ugh, their Patreon is insane. Molly on Mammoth Club <laughs> makes more money on Patreon than, than some people make in a year. That, that's yeah, that's right. And it's, it, you know, so they're, they're, they're doing very well. Very well. And, and everybody that's on all ears.net, I like them, but they're, I, what I said when Molly left was they're supporting cast. They're not, they're, they're yeah, not right. the leading men and women and, and they're very nice and all. I can't remember their names now. What's the, Seabiscuit, the funny guy, what's his name? You know, know what I'm talking about? Love Muff. I don't know. They all got, they all got nicknames. I, I don't know. But they're just they're they're supporting cast. I think I think you got a great idea. Hire Michael K. I'm telling you, I think that would be a win now, combination. Yeah, and uh, spokesman. But they they both they got they got to dress a little nicer and shave and stuff. Yeah, they do. They have to clean up a little bit. <laughs> both of them look a little scruffy <laughs> sometimes. But we like them both. They're but spokesman's. You know, he's really big on TikTok. 
And he's so talented. You know, I he did loved a, his vid, his music stuff. You know, too. Spokesman did a YouTube short recently, and it was just to sell a. Oh yeah, he does a shorts product. a lot. Yeah, he did a product. He did a product placement YouTube short, which he may have also uploaded the TikTok, but it's on YouTube. If you go to Spokesman's channel, yeah, he does a lot of shorts, and it's for the coolest suitcase I've ever seen. Where I I don't know how to describe this suitcase, but I I got it written down. I want to buy this suitcase. And he took a suitcase into all of the parks and went all, throughout all the parks, all the theme parks, with carrying this suitcase around, showing how it works. I don't know how they let him in with this no, suitcase. that's crazy. I'm surprised. And it was really cool. And it's just a short, so it's only a minute long. Yeah. And, and, of course, it's got music because he sings and dances. Yeah, he's very talented. If they hire Spokesman, okay. Or Michael K., either one. I think they should hire Michael K. and Spokesman because I think AllEars.net could use two different people to be mm-hmm. correspondents. Um, not only do they have to— Dress nicer and shave. They can give them a wardrobe uh, budget. Yeah. Okay. They both got to shave, <laughs> shower. <laughs> I'm sure they shower. Wear nicer clothes and spokesman. And no flip flops. That's what I was building up to say. No flip flops. <laughs> yeah. No flip flops. Even though everybody wears flip flops in Florida. Yeah. It's not the most professional. Yeah. That, I mean, that's my opinion. You guys listen. But I just want to say this <laughs> this final thing, though, you think alike. on banning the, the yeah. filming on Space Mountain. I believe, without question, Disney has decided to ban filming on all the rides. And uh, just mm-hmm. to recap it, they, I agree. The, the Space Mountain filming ban has begun. There is a sign at the entrance of Space Mountain right now. No filming on phones or cameras. And I do think this is a lead up to Tron because you're, they don't want people filming on Tron because of the type of ride it is. But it's it, it will spread to other rides because it'll be easier to enforce. And I think they want to ban it. I think there's too much. I think there's too many vloggers and live streamers in the parks. Personally, anyway, I agree. I don't <laughs> think they can enforce it if it's only on select rides. It would get extremely confusing. And I think, and like I said, it makes no sense that they are only doing it on one ride. They're obviously bringing it in mm-hmm. and they're going to be putting signs up, I believe, across all the rides yeah. and not allowing it. And again, we're a little vindicated because we said this months ago and uh, that it was going to happen. We got a, a lot, lot of heat people from it. A lot of heat. us yeah. uh, and uh, criticized and, and said, that, and you know, we took it and said that we were misleading, being bait. dishonest, we don't clickbait, do clickbait, all this stuff. We don't do and clickbait. And here we are, and we said in the show, we said, we think it's going to happen. This is, you know, sign of the times. Now it has happened. And now here we are. So very yeah. interesting. Well, stuff. listen, that's all we have time for today. Let us know all of your thoughts in the comments. We'll talk to you next time.